from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Under the spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. So sang the poet Longfellow of one of our colorful and romantic American industries of olden times. Times which we sometimes call the good old days. But just how good were the good old days? The blacksmith of olden times, a mighty man was he. He had to be. He was the steel industry. The tiller of the soil, a mighty man was he also, and he had to be. He was the food industry, toiling for the bare necessities of life. The woman in the home, not often do you hear her grandchildren sigh for the good old days, not if they really know how she labored from dawn to dark. We need to know from whence we have come, from what we have advanced, to appreciate what we have achieved, and to have faith in opportunities to come through the American system, founded upon liberty and freedom of initiative that has created a progress envied by all other nations. Go back 50, 100 years, and watch this system at work, America marching forward, forward on the road to the marvels of today, and a more widespread distribution of the benefits of industry than any other nation on the globe has ever seen. Liberty and freedom of enterprise were the gifts that stimulated creative minds in America. In those minds, ideas were taking shape, dreams were becoming realities, progress was being won, and future wealth produced for all in new products, new services, new jobs. What an inspiration to our forefathers who toiled hard and long if they could have seen beyond their horizon. But such vision is given to few men. There have always been skeptics, pessimists, doubters, people who are willing to call the world a finished job 50 years ago. The path of industrial progress has never been easy for those who have dared to set their feet resolutely upon it. Witness. It's just a fad. Never be practical. Suppose it rained. She won't run. She won't fly. As far back as 1830, there was a canned food industry in America. The hours are from 7 in the morning to 6.30 at night. The wages are a dollar a day. Satisfactory? Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Daggett. When can I start? Now you started. Get to work in there. Thank you, sir. Hang your hat and coat over there. It'll do all this work even faster than you can think about it. It's a can-making machine. Say, there's no future in this business if machines take our jobs away from us. Hmm, there's no future anyhow. Who's ever gonna eat canned stuff? Except in sailors. Heaven help them. It can't be done. It won't go. It won't fly. It won't work. 
We can't do it. What's the use? And in spite of the dismal chorus that has ever been with us, America marches forward. Dear, that was a delicious soup we had tonight. You sure can cook. I'm glad you think I can cook, dear. We have made progress. Inventive genius has brought us a long way from the toil and labor of the frontier home far from the drudgery with tools that were mere extensions of a man's arms, and from the labors of the blacksmith, whose arms were like iron bands, but whose back ached with the endless drudgery of his daily task. Today, no spreading chestnut tree could cover the nation's smithy, the mills that require thousands of modern blacksmiths to meet the demand for steel. The pioneer's acre of wheat which demanded of him the last ounce of his strength, now stretches out to far horizons because American ingenuity has harnessed power and made it the servant of man. It is these new days and these new methods of modern industry that have provided progress, jobs, human comfort, and greater opportunities for more people than our forefathers ever dreamed of by producing more of the things that people want. Progress, jobs, human comfort, and more wealth for more people. These things have not just happened. Science and industry have worked, worked together to improve the old and to create the new. And even today, new methods and new things still in the development stage throughout the nation's thousands of workshops will create new opportunities, new jobs, more wealth for all in the years to come. The test tube of science holds television, the wings of tomorrow, new types of houses, air conditioning, streamlined trains. Unnumbered things will be developed because of this nation's imperishable heritage of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is this that has given us all of the industrial progress that we have achieved in the past and a certainty of progress in the future. A certainty as long as this great gift of liberty, individual liberty to grow greater and better, is valued and protected. You are descendants of pioneers, but you are also pioneers. Opportunities still rise from every smokestack every test tube, every laboratory, every workshop in the land. You have come a long way from the drudgery of the blacksmith shop and the hand labor of that day. But your journey forward has just started because this is America. Where do we go from here? Straight ahead and don't spare the horses. Horses, your grandfather. There aren't any more horses. My grandfather. I wonder what our grandparents would say if they could see the world as it is now. Great work, kids. Carry on. Carry on what? The heritage they handed us. Freedom. Individual initiative. Opportunity. Let's go, America! This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.